Khan Academy is an amazing tool that I like to use in my classroom. The main reasons I use Khan Academy is that it is self-directed by the students, I am able to differentiate from my students, and it goes above and beyond the sixth grade math curriculum that I'm using in my room, which will help develop some lifelong learners, giving them a place to go and locate new information. Sixth grade mission page. Um, there's always a mastery challenge up here. Um, initially, you do a lot of mastery challenges so that Khan Academy can figure out what the students already know and what they need to work on. Um, but then eventually, you'll have like one mastery challenge a day, and that's just kind of a check in to see hey, if you mastered the skill yet. Um, underneath the mastery challenge is a list of practice items. Some practice items are automatically kind of uploaded in after the mastery challenge so students. They kind of get this, hey, we think you'd be ready for this skill, why don't you come here and practice? Um, but students can also add their own items to this practice list, uh, maybe based on what they're interested in or what we're working on in class. In that case, they come over here, uh, at the top is kind of their pie chart, how far, how much, how many skills have they even worked on or started in Khan Academy, and it shows them in this pie chart as in numbers. But then there's also all this breakdown of the main skills in sixth grade. They go along with our standards pretty well. And so students can come here and then, so all the dark blue ones are skills that have been mastered. The light blue are ones that they've practiced. Gray is not practiced. And if they have a red square, that means that they need to practice that skill. So students can come over here and they can kind of just look through and say, well, I want to learn a little bit about negative numbers. And then maybe this one is ordering small negative numbers. So I can click on this box and what that actually does is it adds it to my practice set over here. Students can then click the practice and in practice skills they are always required to get so many questions in a row. This is kind of how they try to show mastery is that not just can they do one or two correctly but can they get five questions correct in a row. And so let's say in your first five questions you get one wrong it's going to keep making you answer questions until you get five in a row. So that's really great for the practice and for actually assessing mastery. Um, so students have a question, order the following numbers from least to greatest. In this case, this is a moving sort of skill. So they're actually going to be moving these numbers to try to get them in the correct order. If this was a skill that they needed to do some work for, there is a scratch pad built in so that they can kind of write numbers out and they can do the work that they need to do. When they're all done, they can erase it, close that scratch pad, and maybe put in their answer. If students are struggling on the skill, they do have hints. Um, they can get, I believe, up to three hints on a question. Typically, the hints by the end may give the student an answer, but Khan Academy records that, so it won't give them kind of full credit for that question, or it'll mark it as you know, they need practice on it. Students can also watch a full video on ordering integers and negative and positive numbers in this case. Um, that video is always there during the practice. The hint is always there during the practice. Uh, during a mastery challenge, however, those two scaffolds go away because students are attempting to show that they understand. Um, so on a typical day, I would use this, uh, tell my students, okay, you know, we're going to do some Khan Academy practice. They have the choice to come in and pick their own skills. On certain days, I might say, hey, we're working on ratios. So I would like you to go in, add some ratio practice to your skill chart, and then practice those and see how you do. Um, so it's very easily adaptable to fit the needs of every classroom. It's differentiable, and this is a place where students can kind of get, build some online learning skills. Um, under subjects here, you can see all the different skills that Khan Academy currently has. So in addition to lots of math, there's also science and engineering, arts, humanities, and economics, finance, computer. Uh, computing. Um, some of these look like some higher level skills, but even under like world history, there's like a world history for beginners. So that would definitely hit at that middle school, some primary level um, education. You know, hour of code, computer animation, this is really getting into those um, tech skills and STEM sort of items. And this is where a student who is interested in coding and building video games, they can come and they can start working on those skills. And it's the exact same as in, as in the math. They have have some hints, they have some videos, they really walk the students through. You know, students would not need a teacher for these skill sets. Um, that's why I really appreciate Khan and everything he can do for my classroom.
Fiscal Formative is the next tool that I want to discuss. Uh, this is a program that I really enjoy because of its efficiency for myself as a teacher and the ability to get information to students. But on the student side, it's a very self-directed learning. Uh, students are interacting with media, so they get to view a worksheet, but they can also easily access videos. They're submitting their answers online, um, and I'm able to add in scaffolding for the students via these videos and via this help. Um, and they are you know, able to be successful through that worksheet or activity without the direct help of a teacher. So the best part about GoFormative is that you can upload PDF files of worksheets or activities or whatever it is and you can actually build right onto them. So you can add scaffolding to them, you can add the questions to them, you can change things up, that sort of thing. Um, so I've uploaded just one of the um, worksheets through my curriculum, Big Ideas Math, and I'm going to add some scaffolding to it. Um, so students would see the other side of this, they would just see the worksheet and they would see the scaffolding, but I wanted to show you how you can add it in there. Um, so all I've done is created a GoFormative account and I'm creating a new assignment and I've uploaded this PDF file and now you can see my cursor is kind of a plus sign. So I can go where I need to go and I can just add a question or I can add content. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add content to make sure my students understand what a double number line is. Um, I can add an image, I can do a text block, I can do a view only canvas or a YouTube. I love this YouTube feature. feature. I can search right from here, so I can search double number lines. Um, and typically what you do is you'd sit here and you'd watch through these videos. Um, they bring me a couple different ones. Um, I'm just gonna select, I'm gonna go with uh, using double number line diagrams. Um, this video is then put into it. I can give the content title, whole number line video, uh, done. So now that it has this little green, so the students know that when they see that green kind of play button, that's going to be for a video that they can watch. I can now, since the worksheet's on here, if I want my students to complete this worksheet all online, I can add the question. Um, and we're going to make this be a short answer, or I could make it a multiple choice too. We could do it either way. Um, multiple choice, show your work, short answer, or a true false question. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to make this be a short answer, which means that the question text here, I'm just going to put number one because the question is already on there. Um, and then you could add a correct answers if I wanted to. Um, this type of question has more than one correct answer, so I'm just going to go ahead and click done. I might move this one so it's a little bit closer to our one here. That's what I like too, is it's very manipulative. I can adjust things afterwards. Um, down here, and then, you know, so I would add this for every question, I guess. So I'm going to add in short answer um, number two. Okay. Um, I would keep going through this worksheet. Now, write a unit rate for the situation. Um, so this is where I can add content again. I just so happen to have created a unit rate video, so um, this is a music video I created about unit rate. My students love watching it, um, so I'm going to put it in there just so they get kind of a little happy part of the assignment. Okay, done. And then I might add another second video where it's more how you find the unit rate. So I have lots of scaffolding in here, kind of, oops, missed that one. Um, can make the assignment kind of go out, how do we find that? Um, unit rate problems. So let's just go with this one here. Okay, and then I might again, I'm gonna add in the question. Uh, this time I'm going to make it be a multiple choice of $44 in four days. I can have um, $42 in two days. They might think that it's $44 in one day. Um, add our correct answer, $11 in one day. And then maybe another wrong one. $10 in one day. Very correct. So they have it there. 
on. Okay, now they go through. So when students see this worksheet, what's going to be for them is they can click on all of these items and they would click and they would answer their enter their answer and then again on the teacher side I can get some live results from these and it can show me exactly what they did um, if I wanted to show work um, so that gives them a place I can type in my question and then they can actually draw so if they have a tablet or a touch screen that'd be great even using it with a mouse um, so I could say show me how you find the unit rate for number four and then they would have a background and draw, and I would actually see their drawn response. I can assign a point value for that. You know, was the question correct? Did they use the strategy we've been working on? And I can assign point values to that. And then in the end, I get a graded value. Uh, so again, just really stressing, this is a great resource if you have a sub in your room or if you're just really looking for some self-guided practice for students, because this sort of thing with the scaffolding they don't need to get up and ask you as many questions. They should be able to use the videos, use kind of those hints that are built in to kind of go through it. And then from the teacher end, I, it collects their responses automatically. It grades it through the system. I can go through and assess some different point value grades as well. It can be integrated with a Google Classroom. I can get their names in there. Um, overall, just a really fluid, easy resource to use in the classroom for some self-directed and scaffold learning. The final tool I'm going to discuss today is Edmodo. Uh, Edmodo is kind of an online classroom based program. You can use it with the whole class. Uh, within each class you can even make smaller groups, uh, but it allows for a really good discussion between students. Since I can post to students and students can post to one another and respond and discuss, uh, which I think is a really great online tool for students to be able to learn and do because it's one that they will experience but they don't always get that direct um, instruction on. This, these discussions often lead to collaboration. I can create groups and projects on through Edmodo and then I can also assess students learning through Edmodo. I have a couple classes that I put in. Um, so I have a couple of my classes here and I've created this practice class. Um, when I'm, if I wanna just, you know, send a note to my students, you know, when they log in, they have their practice class right there. What's really great is you could also send a note to practice class parents. So if I have that information, I'm able to put it in, it makes that communication really easy for my students. Um, there's also, uh, assignments that I can assign within the assignments. You can put a specific due date and time. You can lock the assignment after the due date. Uh, it adds it right to the grade book. You can assign quizzes, polls, uh, snapshots, which are standard based assessments kind of created or used through the snapshot program. Um, what's really cool about that is you pick the standards you want to assess and then students have a short or, you know 12 question quiz that they have to go through and it's all based on those standards and the feedback you get as a teacher is how did each individual student do what standards do they know and what standards do they not know and then it gives you recommendations as a teacher for that whole class what standards should you maybe reteach? And that's great because a lot of times we complete, in, let's say, a chapter in our math textbook and students show that they know it, but do they still know it in that, a month later? And then we go into that question of mastery. Have they mastered it yet if they've forgotten it so soon? Um, so you're able to kind of reteach and readdress a lot of those issues using Edmodo. Um, another big reason I love Edmodo is it really facilitates uh, discussion and collaboration between the students, which is one of our new literacy skills that we really want students to build. Um, I work with 11 and 12 year olds, so oftentimes they are not supposed to have social media, though many of them do, um, but this taking the time in Edmodo to teach students, you know, how to post a question, uh, what sort of things should we post to others, what's the correct response to someone's question, how can we help people through some of those issues? So it really supports that discussion between students and it gives them a safe place to do that because as Edmodo in my class, only you know the students inside my class can see the things that we are discussing. 
Uh, now Edmodo is able, you know, if students so wish or myself as an adult using it, you know, you can go and find other things people are discussing about problems, issues, you know, concerns, and students can really become active members in that environment. Uh, helping to solve problems, you know, discussing different things. So these are skills that Edmodo really kind of supports. They want students discussing things. They want posts going there that can, students can discuss on, uh, kind of argue or debate or agree and help, you know, those different parts of the online environment that students may not be properly trained in. You know, they all know how to post and just, you know, say things online, but they, they know, you know, things how to post, where to post, what are things they should discuss, uh, what makes a good answer. If they're trying to help someone, do they know how to phrase it or do they know how to approach, you know, solving a problem for somebody else, those sort of things. Um, so Edmodo is great on the teacher and student end. Um, students can uh, access all the material there even if they weren't even in class so if they were sick or if they were gone on vacation you know they can still log into the class and see all the materials everyone is working on as a teacher I'm able to post things all in one location it has the ability to grade these items and I can put that in my gradebook um, so it really streamlines the process for myself and for the students